Well, Mr. Ty Cooper, it's mighty good to see you today. Wonderful filmmaker, artist. It's so lovely to have you. Thank you for your time. And Amanda, tell us about Amanda, your project, because you know we, we know you've done Mingle to much critical acclaim, to the much joy of audiences. Yeah. It was hilarious, actually. If you haven't seen Mingle, you have to see Mingle. And so now you've been working on Amanda. Can you tell us about the project, what you got you into the project? Um, um, Amanda is, in, a, in the most simplest form, Amanda is a complicated story. And mm. I, I wanted to tell it in the most simplest way. Mm. And um, but the storyline of Amanda is about a woman, young woman, twenty eight years old, um, which um, the movie opens at twenty. I mean, she's twenty eight years old, but mm. her mother died from cancer when she was nine. I see. So she kept. She has carried this trauma pretty much all her life because what she remember most about her mother is her mother suffering uh. for the last like couple years of her life. Right. So that kind of thing stays with um, a person. And I really wanted to tell this complicated story because when you're dealing with trauma, there's nothing easy about trauma. Hmm. Trauma is complicated. Right. Because it impacts us in so, on so many different levels. And um, untreated trauma impacts how we deal with other human beings, other people. Oh, so yeah. it impacts our relationships, you know. So, um, so it opens up with Amanda at 28 years old. She's an artist, a painter. She's waiting for her work to get curated in the gallery. And, you know, as I stated to stated about trauma, you know, trauma for Amanda has not allowed her to open up to get close to other people. Hmm. She has these close relationships, her father, um, and she goes to the coffee shop on a regular basis. So she's a regular in the coffee shop. So hmm. at the time, she has this comfortable setting in the coffee shop, mm -hmm. but she's still reserved with her feelings. And a young man, mm -hmm. you know, it's always a, a boy meets girl story, <laughs> right? Um, the best stories are boy meets girl stories <laughs> in our society. So, um, um, and she, she get a hint of love. Mm. And, but what happens is that as she's um, preparing that last painting, the final painting um, for the art gallery, for her collection to be considered for curation, you know, she um, she has to face the trauma that she's been holding for the you know all of her life, basically. Huh. Huh. Well, it you know it's it's interesting you talk about the boy meets the girl because it's very often when you get, try to get close to someone that mm -hmm. some of the things that you've got inside actually come out. There's something about the presence of the other that makes you actually face yourself. Yeah. And I like the idea that she's always an artist because so many artists and indeed. You know, one of the reasons they're attracted to art, they don't even realize it is because it's a way to work through those traumas. Yeah. You know, if you ask them directly, did you get into art to deal with trauma? They often will go, no. <laughs> you know, they won't, they won't say that, but that's actually kind of what's underneath the surface. Yeah. Uh, so I like all those layers because to me that, that, you know, when you see a film and you feel like, ah, oh, that's actually realistically how it, how it goes. It's right. always nice to see that because right. it feels like, you know, you're really trying to tell a real story. You know, all art is imagined. But not all art is equally um, made up. You know, some of it is more anchored and some more of it is more grounded. I just really think it's important. What's nice in your work is that when you see the story, you say, oh, that, that could be someone I know. That could be me. Yes. Uh, and, that, and that's how it operates. And then you reflect on your own life and start going, oh, that's why in my relationships, you know, it might not be the trauma that Amanda has, but your own traumas come out and you feel like, oh, I'm not alone. And I'm not weird because that's what happens. Mm -hmm. It's actually the time where you're forced to face yourself. And that's actually a good thing. Uh, because we can become, you know, we can we can face those things and, right. and move and move on. With the character of Amanda, what would you say if I'm trying to go? Oh, okay. Well, Amanda sounds like a compelling character, but you know, there's a lot of compelling characters out there in stories. There's a lot of movies of different things. What is it something about Amanda that you think audiences or people will go? Oh, that's what they'll remember. You know, they'll hear the name Amanda and they'll think of your movie. You know, mm -hmm. what 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 would what would you say that would be that kind of defining characteristic of, of something that's um, would leave an impression on audiences because you know for you to make a movie named Amanda must mean she's special to you or yes. that she's got a special place for you. What would you What would you say? Well, one thing about Amanda that really truly is special is that she is she is you. Mm. You know, she's no different than you or me. Mm. And what I mean by she's no different is that she has this um, she has this thing about her that's relatable. Mm. And I think every every not I don't think. Every good story is relatable, or it wouldn't be a good story. Oh, yeah. Every good story is relatable. It may not be relatable to everybody, mm. but it's relatable to someone. Mm. And Amanda is that girl next door. Mm. You know, she's she's kind, she's sweet, she's loving. Mm. And what makes us so similar to so many other people is that, 
it's two levels. What you see is what you get, but what you see isn't necessarily all that there. It's more to it. It's like a glacier. You see the yeah. top. It's yeah, you see them. the top. And but she hides her trauma because mm-hmm. her friends in the coffee shop didn't know that she's been dealing with the trauma. Right. She has opened up to them. Right. That although they love her. Right. But they haven't opened up. She hasn't opened up to um to them. Mm-hmm. So. She's like us. She's she's complicated. Mm. Yeah, I always think it's an interesting question. Do you tell people about your trauma? Can you not tell yourself it's trauma? You know, sometimes it feels like it's loving not to put that weight on other people. But then other times, friends feel upset that you do. They're like, well, you didn't trust me mm-hmm. with your trauma. You know, it's a really difficult question right. um, on should you tell people? Should you not tell people? Is it loving or is it going to... You know, sometimes you tell people what you're going through and then they don't call as much. <laughs> you, know, <laughs> you know, they don't want to deal with you. They don't want to deal with it. And but the thing about it, too, um, and I don't mean to cut you off. No, no. One thing about one thing about Amanda is um, what I believe the audience is going to struggle with is to figure out is Amanda selfless mm. or selfish. I think that's really good uh, because that. Well, I always think that good art, good stories, do not make it explicit or clear what value is being exercised. Yep. You know, bad arts like oh, this character is obviously being selfless. This character is obviously being selfish. But actually, very often in human life, you know, we'll do something, and in our minds, we're doing it out of love, and in the minds of other people, we're doing it just because we want to. There's, there's no virtue in it. It's called interpretation. Yeah. Oh, that hermeneutics. Yeah, that interpretation. We actually, I think, sometimes underappreciate how challenging interpretation is because we just think, well, because it's, I guess they call it the curse of knowledge. Like if you're doing something out of love, you know you're doing out of love. So you think it's self-evident if it's love. But to other people, it could easily just be viewed as selfish or nothing special or inconsiderate or different things. I mean, you know, it's like everyone feels like a victim, right? They feel like, well, I'm doing this for my husband. He just thinks I'm doing it because I want to do it. And, you know, and and everyone feels, and the husband's like, well, I go to work and I don't want to work. Or, you know, the wife's like, I'm going to work and I don't want to be there, but I'm doing it for you. Mm -hmm. And it's like, no, you just want to get away. And everyone Mm -hmm. feels that, like, victimization. And so then everyone's hurt. Nobody talks. Nobody thinks about it. And, you know, and what's bad is if you have movies and art, that present values as if they're self-evident, then you think they are Mm self-evident. And so to have a work that makes a question mark Mm -hmm. on Amanda's motives can actually be more helpful to people to sort of reflect and navigate their own relations. The subtitle, or well, tagline, the Mm. tagline to Amanda, of Amanda, is the art of life. Mm. And, you know, and that's the thing, that's what Amanda's truly all about. Amanda's about community, Mm. relationships, Mm. love, Mm. art, Mm. and trauma. Mm. And I combine those five things to be the art of life. So that's the tagline that goes under Amanda. Yeah, I have this image now of, you know, you have each um, layer of a painting. You know, you have the first layer and the second layer. And so the art of life, you know, the the life, the trauma, the relationship. And I like that phrase, too, because the art of life, because Amanda herself is an artist. So the art of navigating. That's that's a nice double double phrase there. And life. The word life is very important. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. Amanda, you know. Well, I like the phrase the art of life, too, because I think very often we think of life as something to strategize. You know, you get your right mm-hmm. variable, you get your plan, and then it yeah. all works out when often art act. Life, life is more like an art and you know art is more like cooking like you you have ingredients and you say oh this you know this pine needs sugar but too much sugar it's no good yeah. you know oh it needs a crust but too much crust it's no good it's yeah. slow pat you actually have to measure everything and balance everything right. and taste it and kind of as you go and that's yeah. more what life is mm-hmm. but we get these metaphors of this structure we build or something we navigate and then when life yeah. turns out to be an art form <laughs> not a business we're caught off guard <laughs> you know when something unexpected you yeah. know some sickness comes up or you have a trauma come out yeah. you know you have to have that improvisational artistic ability to navigate yeah. it because if you know what do they say you know we make plans and god laughs or yeah, something exactly, right yeah, exactly. and then we don't know what to do uh, is... and, and different things like that what are some of the other characters in the story or yeah. that you like and different personalities i love lloyd lloyd <laughs> yeah. i enjoy lloyd too <laughs> i love that character yeah, yeah. I, I love lloyd i had to do some cutting on set of lloyd mm-hmm. I, had to, I had to cut um smaller scenes of lloyd two of them um because of unpredictable oh, sure. rain, sleet, snow, mm. filming in February, mm. tight budget, five day shoot, right. full time, right? Um, having union guys who don't, you know, who mm. really 
prefer not to work well, 14 hours. 14 <laughs> hours is a bit. Yeah, you know what I mean? So, <laughs> so I, had to, I had to do some cutting. I had to, I had to kill the babies, is what we sure. call it. And um, so, you know, but Lloyd is amazing. Lloyd mm-hmm. is this person. Lloyd has his own story. And the story of Lloyd, Lloyd is going to be written um, sometime next year. Oh, wow. Yeah, Excellent. He's going he to have his own movie as well. Excellent. Um, but Lloyd is um, this, this attorney who got in trouble. Mm. Great guy. He got in trouble because he did a favor for someone got this bar, mm. lost his family, blah blah blah. Mm. You know, wealth and everything. And he opens the door in Amanda mm. for a loose change. Mm. You know. But you have this guy who who, who was an attorney mm. from Harvard. Mm. And that and what's so good about Lloyd is that, you know, people judge a book by its cover all the oh, time. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, you see a person open a door for you for money, you think that oh, he must not have an education. Yeah, you know, he, he must yeah. you know what I'm saying? No. Oh, yeah. That's not Many of us are one or two paychecks away from homelessness. Oh, yeah. Oh, you know absolutely. what I'm saying? So when you lose your family and everything, stuff happens upstairs. Oh, man. That can really um, alter your life and alter your path, you know, your path. So, um, so Lord, but one thing about Lloyd is that you would think someone like that would be depressed down mm. and out. Mm. Nah, he's singing in front of the coffee mm. shop, mm. you know, um... The third scene opens up with um, Amanda giving him a painting for Lloyd Vice that she gave that he oh, gave her. Yeah, you know, um, and he and he is the gatekeeper of the mm. coffee shop. Mm. He doesn't own it, mm. but to go to get into that coffee shop or come out of that coffee shop, you gotta pass you gotta Lloyd. Go Lloyd. So he signifies something. He signifies mm. this um, this like a shaft mm. that you can hang your stuff on. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? This rod, you know, mm-hmm. like you know, you go to the Bible, you know, oh, yeah. that rod, you hang your problems on that rod. Oh, yeah. That rod oh, is yeah. sturdy enough to hold whatever you have. Oh yeah. And that's what Lloyd represents. Mm-hmm. But in Lloyd's story, in his own movie, mm-hmm. you see, I take you into his struggles. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I take you into his depression. Mm-hmm. I take you into his house. I mean, well, his room. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It doesn't open up with him singing in the coffee shop. Amanda's story opens up with, well, the third scene opens up with um, um, Lloyd singing. Yeah, 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 yeah. But see, understand this. Amanda's story is Amanda's story. Mm-hmm. Lloyd is part of that story. So you see the best of Lloyd. Oh, yeah. But I'm a sh- and, and when you get to Lloyd's story. Mm. Different ballgame. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's yeah. like, you know, it's like. Bruce Bruce Wayne, I take you to where his parents got killed. Right, right. It's like the Joker. I right. take you to when he was criticized and oh, yeah. embarrassed and sh- his shortcomings. Desperate, right, right. And desperate and everything. Oh, yeah. Lloyd, I'm going to take you there with Lloyd. Mm, mm. So enjoy Lloyd and Amanda. <laughs> <laughs> you know, because, you, because you might get, a, I'm gonna take you on a dog face. Different, different ball game. Good well, Lord. you know, a, a few things. Um, <laughs> one of the things I think we sometimes, it's pretty easy to to be singing in a good mood when things are good, right? Yeah, you right. know, when you got like a paycheck and everything's great. The question is, what happens when you lose everything, mm-hmm. right? And how do you manage it in a way to put your best face forward, but in a manner that's not denial? Right. You know, again, that's another example. If you're standing and open the door, are you hiding what you went through or are you actually overcoming what you went through? Is right. that a sign where you're not letting it get to you? Right. You know, it's a complicated... It's complicated. It's yeah, complicated. Definitely. And actually, that also, I think, suggests the importance of relationships because, you, can, like you were saying, judge a book on its cover, you can't just from the outside judge the value that's being exercised, yeah. right? You have to know yeah. them. You have yeah, to go you into your know. life, yeah. right? Yeah. To see yeah. are they... You know, yeah. they're putting on a... You know, when they're home... I always... It's a funny thing too, like when you talk about how you know the public Amanda story, you're singing, and then your own story, you're kind of sad. There's this, um, there's always this funny phenomenon where it can almost sometimes be easier to be nice around a stranger than the people you love. You know, like you yeah. see spouses bicker and different, but they would never bicker that way around right. strangers or different right, things. How right. we just kind of know yeah. that when we're around the outside world, we got to yeah. put a good face on. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, you know, in yeah. one situation, someone could be putting a good face on around strangers or the general mm-hmm. public, and it's actually kind of a bad faith, a salty and bad faith, because when they go to the home, they're, a, you know, not a nice person. Yeah. But in another situation, it could be that the person acting that way is incredibly noble because they've suffered so much and they're mm-hmm. actually like, 
learning to open the door for other people, yeah. even though you know they've had the door shut on them yeah, <laughs> so yeah, much per se. And that absolutely. I think, because you're such a good artist, I'm just you know because I'm always interested in having these discussions like the art of telling for other people listening like what it's like to tell a good story you know what are the different things being exercised like right there you want your characters to be a kind of question mark mm -hmm. is this someone who's running from what they've gone through or is this someone who's overcome what they've gone through with right. Amanda not sharing the trauma is that selfish yeah. or is that selfless yeah. and the only way to tell is to know their story yeah. and I think people are very similar like you, you, you got to know their story. You got to know what they've gone through to know what what um, values being exercised. Exactly. You know, because exactly. you can't just tell from the outside. And I think generally it's it's a different topic, but I think that's been a big problem with a lot of modern stories. You know, it's kind of self evident the value that's being exercised. It's like obvious what they're doing, and that's just not how life is. Yeah. And when all you watch are movies that show those kind of characters, it doesn't make you reflect on your on your own life in different ways, right. you know, to kind of learn from it in yeah. different things. Yeah. No, Lloyd is a great character. Amanda is yeah. a great character. I wanted to know, you were talking about having Pharrell's to kill... a good one, too. Yeah, Pharrell's a good character. Yeah. And Pharrell dates Amanda? Kind yeah. of, you know, yeah, no, he, I don't he, want to give your story. Right, he like, practiced Shell. Yeah, he, pra he yeah. practiced Shell, mm. and, and she lets him in. Mm. Well, that, you know, that gets the... Well, that's the uh, the relationship gets the domino moving. Pharrell yeah. is a good character. Yeah. Um, and uh, and you have the screenings. You yeah, know, yeah, all we have, of, yeah, we have... So, right at... You know, at, at the time of us talking right now, yeah, yeah. Um, November 12th and 13th. Excellent. Um, at, um, in Charlottesville, Virginia. Wonderful. Um, you know, at this place called Vinegar Hill Theater, which is a an art theater. It's an independent yeah, theater. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah. been around for ages, for a long time. Mm. And it really supports independent filmmaking. So that's why I wanted to do it there. Oh, wonderful. And I really I have a relationship with the, um, the executive director who I really respect. And, um, and this, they, they have an education component for to teaching teaching children teaching the youth right oh, excuse wow. me as um filmmaking so I wanted to support that theater and have it there and we sold out the first yeah, screening yeah. like a week in two days Ex excellent you know and, um, excellent. so we got the second one that's about to start out soon too excellent so, excellent um, I'm not sure if I'm gonna pick up a third screening because I do have um, other events that right, I'm doing right, too and right. teaching um filmmaking workshop at the local yeah. community college in October so I have a lot of stuff going on. Well, and that reminds me, you know, you were saying something about in the screen having to kill your babies, right? Yeah. You know, different mm -hmm. screen. One of the reasons, and, you know, I, I'm, I'm always very impressed with your getting it done, with your marketing, with getting the project put together and right. different things. And there's something about the artist who, say, maybe they create their screenplays, but it stays on their computer or different yeah. things. And it's all perfect. But one of the things that's so important... It's all perfect. Yeah, it's all perfect, right? That's the beauty, right? It's perfect on your computer. Yeah, no one sees it. <laughs> no one sees no one it. Sees so perfect. no one can tell you it's not perfect. <laughs> Plausible deniability yeah. is wonderful. Yeah. Um, but the funny thing is, when you go to, like, do your work, suddenly, you know, the, um, the, 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 the truck is stuck. Suddenly the camera does. Suddenly the, the restaurant that was supposed to let you in doesn't let you in. Yeah. And one of the important lessons you learn is what is it like to get your work out there, know that some things didn't go as you wanted to have it, and then you're going to put it in front of people who are probably going to sit there and criticize you for the things that you know aren't right, but they're not right because of stuff you couldn't control. Yes. Like a great example, like for a short story once, you know, you have a word restriction of 5,000 words on show, and it was, you know, 5,500, and I had to cut 500 words, and literally the editors wrote back, commenting on things that needed to be in there that I cut in order to make the word cut. And they're almost like talking down to you, right? They're like making fun of you. They're like, you should have known. And you're like, well, you son of a gun had this yeah, right. arbitrary limit. Right. Uh, and it was, I didn't even think it was reasonable, like a 10,000 word limit. But that's one of the things I always think is so um, important about the artist trying to get their work out. You know, like to, to face that vulnerability. It's so mm -hmm. easy to be the artist in the bubble who doesn't have those experiences. It's yeah. hard when you have to kill your darlings. Yeah. It's hard. And yeah. do you think there's something to be said, like, that there really is something missing in the, the life of the artist or the creator and even just their way they approach creative projects if they never try to get their work out there? You know, mm -hmm. if they just keep it, you know, on their computer for yeah. 10 years. Yeah, I think, I think there's something to say about that when it comes down to you keeping your stuff. It's, there's two things. One, nothing's wrong with it. Mm. If you are the type of artist who just make the work for yourself, sure, sure, sure. If you make the work for yourself, you don't need to put it out, right? Because you made it for yourself. yourself. So it's, you, know, you just read it. Yeah. Oh, I'm a great writer. Yeah, that's amazing. Right. And you move on to the next thing. Mm. If that is what you're doing, yeah, that's right. Right. Most of us creatives, mm. we want to create and express ourselves. Right. It could be something that just 
that's, that's close to us, close to our chest, close to the heart. Mm. It could be something like a social issue that we want to help make change. Mm-hmm. We want to be a, a change agent. Right. So we put it out there to mm. make change, mm. to be thought provoking, mm. to have discussion, mm. and many other different reasons. Make money, mm. right? Right. Um, so it's based on that particular artist. Mm. Now, I've stated this many times before. If I, if you put work in, if you put your art form into the general public, then you can no longer say that you it's doing it for, you. for yourself. <laughs> Right, you can't. Right, oh yeah. Because you are putting out there to connect to someone, mm-hmm. even if you never engage with them, mm-hmm. your work is engaging on your behalf. Mm. That's a good way to put it. I like that. Right. Yeah. So as that when that process is happening, you didn't make it for for yourself because now you're allowing people to interpret mm-hmm. what you created. Mm-hmm. So if you put this. Jackson Pollock, if you put this like abstract painting out there in the world, mm. it's abstract. Right. So it's not this. It's not a certain type of form, mm. right? Like a Mona Lisa mm. or, or 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 Michelangelo's Sistine Chapel. Sure, sure. You sure. know, you know, these are things that they are pictures. You know, that okay. Oh, that's what it be. You know, the light, the mm. coming. That's God. That's mm. you know, all the representation of this. Mm. There still could be interpretations of that. But you know what it is. Mm. You always want to have these interpretations of people. Mm. So when you put the abstract, they say you put something abstract, you are definitely, you are without a doubt allowing people to interpret it, whatever. (laughs) This is not a lady. (laughs) This is not some Rembrandt painting that has the Rembrandt lighting and, you know, his stuff. This is, no one knows what this is. Right. It's not a lady. This is some abstract stuff. Right. Please interpret this. Mm. Jackson Pollock could never have said that he's not making his artwork for someone else. Mm. You know? Mm. Mm. Michelangelo could not say that he's not making it for anyone else. My mm. favorite, Vincent Van Gogh, could mm. not say oh, that yeah. he wasn't making it for someone else. Oh, yeah. And people call, you know, Vincent crazy. Right. But his work still was out there. Mm-hmm. You know, he just had a... <laughs> he had a... Um, an issue with society. <laughs> with his society. brother liked it. His brother liked it. <laughs> yeah, exactly, right? His brother was the biggest fan. <laughs> yeah, his brother, right. Um, so, yeah, so, man, so I just think that, you know, people should put their work out there if they are that artist that doing it for themselves and for others. Enjoy well, and, and I think it's so important that the artists make sure, you know, we were just talking a minute ago mm-hmm. about these characters that, you know, is Amanda selfish or is he selfless with yes. Lloyd? You know, are they hiding or are they overcoming or yes. different things? Mm-hmm. Likewise, the artist has to make sure that if they say, I'm doing it for myself, mm-hmm. that that's actually true as opposed to they're just mm-hmm. saying that to avoid the criticism or, or the process. Right. Maybe. We, we don't know that. Yeah, you don't know. You can't but, judge. Yeah, but I know one thing. Once they put it out there, yeah, they're definitely not doing it for themselves. Yeah, and you, you, you can't retreat to that. Yeah. You know, that yeah. that's the thing. It's very easy to use, oh, I just did it for me yeah. as a sort of retreat. And also to justify never going in the arena, yeah. never facing the situation where the truck is stuck in the snow, so you can't shoot the scene. So the final yeah, right. version of your movie is going to miss something that you wanted it to have. And people are going to criticize you for not having it yeah. as if you didn't think about it and you have to live in that world. Yeah. There is something I, you, uh, There is something incredibly hard about taking something you worked on for 10 years, having to cut mm-hmm. 500 words to get the uh, to, to get it, and then submitting it. But if you don't, it doesn't get out. It doesn't get out. And yeah. you have to live with that and just be okay. You know, that is, there's something very, um, it creates character. There's something um, noble in, yeah. in facing that situation yeah. Yeah. that you deprive yourself if you don't try to put yourself out there, which again, if you're genuine, you're just doing it for you. Well, mm-hmm. by all means. But very often, uh, I just think it's so important for the artist to really ask their motives. Yeah, like, really is that ask, really yeah, yeah. what they, or are they just totally. trying to avoid? Avoid, avoid criti- someone criticizing yeah. your work. Yeah. Um, you getting a sense of the shortcomings yes. or whatever the case may be. But one thing one thing artists have to understand is that no matter what other people say for real for real, unless it's a unless it's a distribution thing. Like sure. someone not putting it out because it's this way. Yeah. Right? Yeah. If if that's your goal. If your goal is to get on Amazon, right, and they say, Well, you need to go through a distributor, mm. boom, okay. Well, you contact the distributor, hey Amazon said I need to go through a distributor. I understand that you are a distributor of Amazon or Netflix. I would like to get this on. Yeah. Then you have some 
admin person right. or some exec over there saying, oh, no, this is not good enough. Right. That's It's all arbitrary. Right. Art is arbitrary. Yeah. Art is the interpretation of someone else of your art is yeah. arbitrary. Yeah. yeah, sure. So, you know, so, but the thing about it, if you have to go through a certain process to get somewhere and it is denied, that's one thing. But it's another thing when right. you put it out there and then you realize oh, I could have did this better, or right. I could have did that better, right. or blah, 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 blah. Right. And you're having, you know, discussions by people who are giving you positive feedback, right. or just feedback in general. Right. You can't be afraid of that. Right. But you got to also understand, what I know is this, is that I'm my worst, I'm my worst critic. Mm. Right? And not to sound like a cliche, but I am my worst critic. So, oh, sure. So I do know, when I look at Amanda, I know what is not in there that I wrote. Right. Because I had to cut. Yeah. Like I know that. Okay. No one no one else could tell me. If I mean, someone if someone tells me, I'm like, Yeah, I know that already. Right. Right. Thank you. <laughs> You're like, Oh, don't you worry. Yeah, don't worry. I was up till two AM. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but I know one thing Can't too, sleep. But I know one thing too is that with Amanda, okay, I'm an editor. Mm. I edit, I shoot, I do a, I do it a whole works. bunch of different things. Yeah, yeah. But with this project, I hire people. Mm. I hire an outside editor. Mm. Right? So that she could put her eyes on what we shot mm. and give me her interpretation mm. as an editor. Mm. What works so well with that is that she did certain things in the first edit. And when I'm looking at I know why she did this. Mm. But I told her, hey, I, wanna, I want this to be changed. I want that to be changed. I gave her my edits. Mm. And she knew why I wanted them changed. Because mm. we spoke the same language. Ah. But we still have a different view mm. of things, right? Yeah. But since I'm paying mm. and I'm the boss of this process, right, right. I'm going to do what I want. Yeah, right. But there were decisions that she made and I was like, yo, that's some great I said, yo, yeah. that was nice. Right. I said, oh, that's a nice cut. Thank you. That, right. that was real cool. Right. So we were able to have this conversation back mm. and forth, back and forth. Mm. So, but some people would not want to have that wow. into their process because they're afraid that they're going to do something that they don't want right. done. Mm. Or they may be afraid that, man, this person didn't really like right. this and they cut my they cut this out. Right. But if you did it, you would leave it in there, but right. it may not be the best decision. Right. So when right. you put it out there into the world to other people, to blah, 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 if it's part of your process or you put a finished product out in the world, Listen to the criticize the, um, the people criticizing them right. or giving you feedback. Listen, right? Because you may walk away with a caveat that's better. Great. Well, I think that gets into the disadvantage of not thinking of your art with any business sense. Mm -hmm. You know, if you start an entrepreneurship and all of the customers are like, "We don't like this ice cream," and you went, "Well, it's the ice cream I want to make," <laughs> you know, so I'm going to keep it there. Yeah. And your ice cream store closes. It'd be like shocking. Yes. But there's something that the artist can be tempted to say, "Oh, well, this was my expression, this, so it's therefore best." Yeah. Yeah. Maybe it is best. And honestly, after if you do it for 20 years, you may have some insight that other people don't. Mm -hmm. But to assume that because you intended it as X, X is best, mm -hmm. that's going to be, that can easily get you into trouble. Right. Um, well, you got to have that kind of, I'm calling it a business sense because there is something like the business person would never go, oh, I wanted to do this. Therefore, mm -hmm. all the customers want me to do something. Well, I'm not going to do it because, yeah. you know, the a yeah. business sense forces me <laughs> to change. And so there's something about having a little right. bit of that business sense in art that I think an artist not having. Like you, they, they fall too much far back on saying, well, the point is to express my vision. And if it expresses my vision, that's what I'm going to do. Okay. Now, again, that's okay. So that's okay, maybe, if you're really, truly genuine when you say that you're just doing this for you. Yeah. But what I see happen, I'd be curious what you think of this, is you have artists that want to say that they're just doing it for them, but really they want it to be out there. Mm -hmm. But then simultaneously they say it's okay if it's just what I, my expression, my vision. It doesn't matter what other people say. But then one day they're like, they really want to get it out there. Mm -hmm. but, they, but they've been trained, they've made a habit so much of deciding what they're going to do based on what they want to do that they're almost their own worst enemy because yeah. they won't adjust. And then as they don't adjust... And they won't, and the work therefore doesn't get out there. It becomes a weight on them right. because they get depressed that their work's not out there. But they literally slam the door on their face because they won't let them do the things to adjust where their work could maybe do something. Yeah. 
And since they've been taught their entire life that the point of art is just to express themselves, it's not even a category in their head that they need to adjust based on maybe the feedback they're getting. Because yeah. some artists think that adjusting based on feedback is like ingenuine. Yeah. Like you're ruining the vision if yeah. you do that. Yeah. And so they become their own worst, they're their own worst enemy. In yeah, that way. I, have, I, have, I have friends, um, artist friends, who will create. Mm. They feel as though no one else could be part of that process right. of them making any kind of adjustments. It's like it's them. No one else is in their head. Mm. So no one else should matter. Mm. And um, to me, they, give, they do themselves a disservice, right. in, my, in my humble opinion. Right. Um, you know, but, you know, you know, I am about individuality sure. as well. Sure. And people just do what they do. They say that they're artists and blah, blah, blah. They may put it out there. So I, the funny thing about, about this same thing, this issue, is that what that make me laugh or even shake my head sure. or both sure. is that you have those who, who, are, who will say that. But then they still put it out there, but yeah. they, but they don't know how to market it, so it's yeah. never successful. Yeah, it's out there with a few views on yeah. Facebook or a few views here and there. So they look at that and get in get in a different headspace mm. of like, man, I put it out there, it didn't get seen like marketing, uh, like you know, and so then they start to criticize people. Yes, instead of themselves, as if. You, sh I put this out here. So you should track. just. You should have seen this. Yes, that's right. You have should have taken the time to click on it. That's right. And listen to it or view it. That's right. And, but that's that's not how marketing works. No, and it puts the you onus know. on other people. Yeah, like yeah, you don't exactly. have to change. Exactly. So for instance, I'm gonna tell you, my, my, Amanda. Yeah. I have two versions: 25 minute version, 44 minute version. Sure. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, Mingu, my. First narrative short was mm -hmm. eleven minutes. Yeah, yeah, thirty yeah, seconds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Film festivals like that. Mm. They like that time, mm. that short time. Yeah. Film festivals love them eight minute shorts. Oh yeah, because they yeah. can put up, they can put a bunch together as part of a short uh, block. That makes sense. And yeah. they can get in. Yeah. When you have a longer short like Amanda's twenty five minutes, mm. I don't know who gonna pick it up. Right. But I can legitimately tell you, although I'm a send it to festivals. I can legitimately sit here and say, I don't create for the festivals. Mm. Uh, I didn't create Amanda for the festivals mm. because I could say that. You know why I can say that? Mm. Because for one, even in my local town, mm. I did not submit Amanda to the film festival. Mm. I'm screening Amanda myself. Mm. I'm a marketer. I'm an event promoter. This mm. is what I do for a living for 28 years. Mm. I know how to market. I know mm. how to promote. So... I created Amanda's 45 minute version for a couple of reasons. For me to screen it, attach it to a 45 minute to 50 minute panel discussion mm. with the actors and myself. Mm. And that's a package to give the, the general public. Uh, I, I wrote see. Amanda. Yeah, 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 yeah. I didn't write Amanda just for myself. I wrote Amanda and created Amanda for the people. Right. So I could say that. Sure. The people. Because mm. they, I put it out there. I sold the first yeah. up. First screening sold out. Second one is about to sell out. Right. I put it out there for that. Right. And I'm doing that same thing in different markets throughout the country. Mm. So I can say I did not sim I did not create Amanda, the 45-minute version, for the festivals. Mm. I'm going to submit it to some festivals who look at the 45-minute version as a feature. Right. But if, like Sundance, their feature is 50 minutes or more. Huh. Anything under that is, is a short. Interesting. I've never seen a 45-minute short at Sundance. Huh. I'm not going to submit that short to Sundance. Right. I will submit. I'm a Sundance Institute member. Yeah. So I get free. I get free um, submission fee waived. Huh. Hmm. Right. The submission fee waived. So I'm going to submit the 25 minute version. Hmm. But I don't. I don't know if it's going to get in because hmm. I have also never seen the 25 minute um, short sure, at, at sure, Sundance. Sure. Sure. I've seen all the short ones. Sure. Under 15 minutes. Sure. I could honestly say. I did not create that for the festival, but I'm going to submit it because it's well done. Mm. And hey, you may have a program, a programmer at a festival with a creative brain sure. to say, you know what? We're going to put this 25 minute version in front of a feature, a short feature film. Mm. Someone else gave them a, fi a 50 minute feature film. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The topic is kind of similar. Let's put this before that. Mm. I've seen that at festivals. Mm. Mm. Yeah, right? So they may do that, mm. but that's up to a festival that's 
comic creator. Well, but even like all of that thinking that mm-hmm. you just did, where you're right. talking about, okay, it's 45 minutes, so I'm not going to send it to the, 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 um, the different festivals, but I could use it as a feature for self-marketing. The 25 could be in for all of everything that you were describing. Mm-hmm. That profound awareness mm-hmm. of the relation of the product and what it is to the marketing realities is something I think many artists don't do. Right. Like they're not thinking the term, they're just thinking into the thing, the art, the internal consistency of it, you know, how does it work and different things like that, which is all well and good. There's nothing to be said about that. But the problem is, if indeed you are someone who really wants to get your work out there, which I do think the majority of artists do, and you haven't taken any of that kind of thinking into consideration, right. then when you get to the place where you're like, well, I want to put it out there, and they're like, why didn't anyone want it? Because you didn't think about any of those realities. Like, I've taken stories now that were like 8,000 word versions and made 2,000 word versions and 5,000 word versions. And then, you know, different versions of the same story um, or because you can submit them to different things. Um, and that's a reality I'm comfortable with. I can say, but this wasn't what the story was intended. Well, okay, then it will die. <laughs> you know, no one will care. That's right, fine. Right. You know, it's dead then. That, right. That's just how it is. Right. And what I think is so important. And this is something, you know, we've, we've, we've discussed that I just think a lot of times people think like artists look at marketing and submitting things is almost dirty. There can be like a dirtiness to it. It's like, no, the purity of the art and you shouldn't even be thinking about marketing and business and things like that. And so they don't even think about it. Well, mm-hmm. the thing that I think is so important and it actually is worse the better of an artist you are. If you're literally like been working for 20 years on painting or, th- or storytelling or whatever, and you wake up and you're 32 or you're 42 or 20 or something, and you're like, I have all this great stuff and it's just on my computer and no one's ever seen it. It is an incredible weight and it is depressing and it weighs on you. But since you have never, but since marketing is not even an option, like thinking like a business person, mm-hmm. then all you can do to fight that weight is to post it on YouTube and get your 10 views. Yeah. And so you feel stuck and then you feel siloed and you're mental. And I see it. I see artists and mental health deteriorates. Mm-hmm. Like they, they really, really weighs on them. And I just think it like mm-hmm. literally, cause I can see it like, you know, we, we basically just decided with all of our nonfiction work, just put it out ourselves. Yeah. We're like, we'll forget it. There's not enough magazines that take philosophy essays. There's not enough festival and they're frankly, a lot of them are low quality. So you're like, fine, I'll just put it out myself. And a reason you don't want to do that is cause you cut off the opportunities with some of the publishing companies at different things. But so you're like, oh, I don't, I don't know. But let me tell you, when you do it and then you start doing the marketing and you start getting connected with people and you get the interest of different academics and philosophers, there's a, there's a hope, there's an encouragement that comes from that. Whereas we still reserve a lot of the um, literary fiction for some of the magazines. So you have this area over here, you can't distribute yourself and the fiction writing and the short stories because once you do that, you, they, they won't accept it in any of the publishing houses or agencies. But over here, you've decided to take all your nonfiction work and do it yourself. So that gives you such an encouragement. You know, you're, you feel so much better. You feel like you're making progress. You feel like you're getting somewhere because you're putting this stuff out. And I just, it's so critical. I've just, in it, and I can thank you for it, just making me aware, think, you know, and I thank you for it, of the importance of that getting some stuff out there dimension. Because it's not, artists need to realize it's not merely a matter of business. Of course, business is a, is a part of it. Mm-hmm. But also, it really does seem to me to have a kind of, mental health, a kind of encouragement, a sort of emotional, sort of like, yeah, we're getting somewhere, we're doing something, which if you don't have, oh my gosh, like you're like at 40, and it's like I said, the better of an artist you are, the worse it is, because like you look at your computer and it's like, I literally have amazing novels, amazing plays, amazing talks, amazing, and it just sits there, and it really eats at you. I just think that is something that artists need to understand. Yeah, I can't imagine it. Yeah, right. Oh, it eats you. Oh, it's bad. Like, and since they don't have any, like you're talking about the 45 minute, but any of that sort of marketing thinking, they don't even know how to get started. So then what do you do? You just pray an agent picks you up. You're begging, please. Yeah, you're you know, begging. Yeah, and yeah. they just slap you around yeah. and you're at their mercy. Having my art out in the world and me receiving or the art receiving recognition mm. does motivate me. I mean, oh, sure. When I put Mingle out there, and instantaneously started getting um, selected for film festivals. Yeah, 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 yeah. And nominated, you know, and won, walked away with a jewelry award for mm. best best mm. Um, mm. best first short. Mm. Like the best first short mm. was a definitely an award for everyone that was involved. 
But sure. that kind of what really truly to be I mean, let's just be flat out honest. Yeah. It's really like almost like a director's award. Sure. Your direction was really recognized mm. and that writing was really recognized. Mm. So but it's also part of the whole thing because the performance was good because of the actors. Oh sure, sure. So sure. everyone got that award. Mm. But you know, so but me as a director, as the editor, mm. as the DP, mm. as the the camera the camera op, I did everything. I produced it. I did so much on that film, and I co-wrote certain scenes. Mm. So I I wrote the opening scene, mm. right? My 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 main yeah, writer wrote it, scene. and then I rewrote the whole thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. He was. I had to put him on a toilet. You know, I, <laughs> it was hilarious. Because I'm on the toilet talking to my mom <laughs> in, in the morning. So you know what I mean? So really, no one can say that I didn't write it because that's me. <laughs> I'm um, talking to her. She, she, the character wasn't me because sure, my, my, sure. we don't have that dynamic. Sure, I'm not. I'm not. You know. You know. I'm my own man. Sure. Tyler wasn't his own man. Sure. But um, but so so yeah. So for me, I you know I just really think it is important, man, to oh yeah, put your work out there, and and just you know just do your thing, man. Oh, just, I agree. Just let and, it be seen, and, man. And, and, and then it, 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 it definitely motivated me. The recognition motivated me because sure. I'm nervous, right? I want to know what's going on. This is my first time really submitting to film festivals, oh, yeah. and it worked. And then I'm like, okay, yeah, yes, you keep going, yes. yeah, And you know, in addition to the recognition, because like we've sent some stuff, you can get this recognition. There's yeah. also something that I find where it's like I finish something, I close the loop. Oh, definitely. That feeling of like I can finish things. I have a book. I have a manuscript that I haven't. Finish and I started writing that mm. many, 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 many years ago. Oh sure. It's time to finish it, but the the manuscript is about the promotion business, it's like mm. a how to book. Oh and, wow! And I really wanted to do a reality TV show connected to the book. That's with fantastic. the same title. With yeah, the same title. Yeah. 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 So I had this reality reality TV show concept that I really wanted to wow. do. Wow. And but I but I so I didn't want to put the book out now or in the sure. past. When I'm not ready to do the show, sure. I want that both to be kind of simultaneous to go together. Oh, yeah, that's kind cool. of go together. Yeah, oh, so yeah. I gotta like get my head in that type of space and my money right to see yeah. am I gonna do that reality show independently and sure. then pitch it, sure, or show them the finished book and say I want to do a reality show about the book on this thing, yeah, right here. Yeah. Oh yeah, no that that's really cool. Like competition, it's a reality. I don't want to say much because I don't know what else. Yeah, I, I, I got you. I got, we'll burn the recording. Yeah. <laughs> so I'm not going to say much beyond that. But, but yeah, so because it will work yeah. both ways. It, yeah. it will help sell both things. That's nice. Well, again, that's just that's another moment. example yeah, that's like, that's of thinking business. about yeah. that thinking. Like it's you're business. thinking of the project. Mm-hmm. And the term. Yeah, and you know, it's just for me, like when you're like, I finish it, there's something encouraging about feeling like it's off my back, like it's yeah. done. True, and then you True. can focus on the next thing. Like, one of the things that I think happens to artists is when they have all these different projects, there's this trying to keep it all in their head, this kind of pulling apart, this kind of, I, I want to call it dilution, mm-hmm. but it's kind of like this pulling. It feels like this pulling, and it, it, it's very, very weighty. And so, you know, the, the thing I just have increasingly just convinced of is that artists need to think of the business and marketing not just in terms of the business and marketing per se, right. but also that it literally will help you in your art. It will help you keep going. It will help you focus on your next project so you do a better job at it because yep. your mind's not still on the stuff mm-hmm. on your computer. <laughs> yeah. and, and it will give you that recognition. And also, too, mm-hmm. it will give you... You think you're a great writer. All right, test it. Like It's actually... I'm just convinced as well putting your stuff That's out there is necessary to actually be a great artist. There's yeah. something that the lack of feedback yeah. really gonna, gets you on. I'm going to tell you something. That's the thing about me, right? Mm. I, I'm, a, I'm a great marketer. I'm a great business person. I'm not a great writer mm. yet mm. because I'm learning. Because you're learning, right? right? One thing I do know, one thing I do like is the fact that I'm willing and open to suggestions and yeah. feedback. Yeah. That's how I get better. Yeah. Um, filming Amanda has made me a better writer just seeing, hearing how my words flowing off the tip of the mouth, and I'm like, oh, that's not right. Cut. Mm, mm, mm. Hold on. I'll be writing certain things right, right there on the spot. Right. Say it this way. Say this. Right. Cut this out. They say this. Right. But that's because I'm not married to my writing. That's that's important. You understand? Yeah. I want to get better. Yeah. As a writer, I want to get yeah. better. Um, I have weaknesses. One of my weakness, one of my weaknesses, um, like when I write. I'm writing pretty um, proper, mm. so um, I am going to the store, right. but that's not good dialogue. I'm going to the store, right. 
you know what I mean? I'll be right back. I'm, I'm yeah, going to the store. I'll be right back. Boom, I'll yeah. be right back. I'm going to the store. That's right. That's that's the dialogue. That's yeah. how we That's speak. how people talk. Right? Yeah. Yeah, we're not on some England, in some yeah. English, yeah. you know, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know what I mean? Like, you know, we're not in England right. trying Same. to be proper. Right? I'm going to go to the store, <laughs> be back by 2 p.m. Yeah. Would you like to come? Yeah. Well, that's one of the, you know, that's one of the problems with writing classes, though. They, you like, know? teach you, like, to write in good write, good, good. Writing on paper is not to- always dialogue. Yep, and dialogue is totally different. Totally different. So, but what happens is that, so I'll, I'll write that, and then I got to go back and rewrite, yeah, and then rewrite, right. and rewrite, and right. which is cool, but I would like to just automatically come out the gate. Yeah, writing. sure, sure, sure. Now, I would get there, because as I'm writing Stain, mm. I saw stuff immediately, I was like, oh, yeah, backspace, 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 yeah, yeah, backspace. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm like, I caught it, and that... See, me catching it mm. is me getting better. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. Me getting better. And so, what I tell people, man, you don't have to be a great writer. Right. Just write. Yeah. And then don't be afraid to get the feedback and criticism from people That's right. to make it better. It, it, writing is rewriting. Yeah, and if you never do that, you know, you don't do that, you're not going to get better. And no. well, but that's what you said that's so critical is you're not overly married to your writing. No. When you're overly married to it, you won't change it. Yeah, and if you won't, won't change it, <laughs> if you won't change your writing, it's like trying to like you're trying to get the fridge through the door and you're like, I ain't taking the door off the hinges. <laughs> it won't get through. It won't get out there. If you're not willing to rewrite or redo whatever, mm-hmm. you must own the final outlet. Mm. You must be Netflix um, CEO. Basically. <laughs> you must uh, it be you must be filming it, yeah. paying for everything, paying for right. your own production. That's right. You directing it. Like yeah, you're doing you, it all. you gotta be on the top part of every single aspect of the filmmaking process or the creation process. Yeah. yeah. To where you don't have to change anything. Yep. And then you're gonna wonder why when people see it, they're gonna be like, yo, why is this out? <laughs> why did Netflix even put this in front of me? Why did I why and then you gonna have you gonna see all the like the thumbs downs like on, on the platforms, okay? Like one hundred percent thumbs down. <laughs> Except for your mother, and then she probably put a thumbs up. You get, one thumb up you get I, that two percent on Rotten Tomatoes. Yeah, <laughs> like, like, two. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. So it's like that is but that is because so if you're not part of that whole process yeah. and you're trying to get yourself out yeah. to the then you need to be able to be like, yo. If you're if you're a fine artist, if you're a painter, mm-hmm. and you submit your work to get curated, and then they deny you, what you should do if they have time? Sometimes they don't have time to explain sure. why you didn't. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. you know, maybe you can ask very nicely, like, "Hey, you know, like I love your, I come to your gallery all, all the, the time. time. I love the work that you guys, yeah. You know, and I, you know, and I understand. You know, I, I get that you didn't, um, you know, think mine would be suitable for your gallery." Can you please tell me what it is? Because I do want to get better. Yeah. Like I want to make the necessary adjustment because I really want my work to I want to be in this is this is my goal. Your yeah. gallery is my goal. Yeah. And I'm gonna do whatever I have to do to get into this gallery. Please tell me what I need to do. See, if you open to that kind yeah. of thing, yeah, that's great. And but see, what some what some artists feel is though, if they are like that, then they are Messing up the integrity of who they are as an artist. That's exactly right. You know what I mean? It burns them. Yeah, yeah, right. Because so, so it's a two, it's it's a twofold type of thing. Mm. Yes, you have to have integrity to your art form. Oh yeah. So you have to be able to say, like me as a director, Mm. there were some things that I wanted to do in Amanda, but my DP and I had a discussion, my AD and I had a discussion, it was like, oh, okay, bro, you know, we don't really need that because blah, 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 it's kind of monotonous, or kind of, you know, we already, but so, but so when, but when I see my final product, I'm like, that needed to be in there. Mm. So now, I'm super firm. Mm. When I know I want something, because this is the thing, you know what you want. Yeah. You know what you want your final product to be like. Mm. You saw it, you envisioned it. Right. Don't let anyone get in your way of right. that. Right. But what I'm saying is the same thing I'm saying about myself as for the festivals. If I'm going to produce a 25 minute piece and I know that they love 10 minute pieces, eight minutes. Right. I got to make the decision. Do I want to do a 25 or can I do a 10 minute piece? That's right. To serve as a short. Well, and you see what and you And still did. tell the story. Yeah. With some integrity. Yeah. Yeah. Well, what you're describing right there just goes right. back to this idea. Is Amanda selfish or selfless? Likewise, when the artist changes their work, 
is it smart because it's going to get them into the film festival or are they sacrificing the integrity of their work? Right. You as the artist have to really ask yourself the question, yes. you know, why am I doing it? Is this going to destroy the work and then I'm cheapening it in order yeah. to get a praise or am I being smart, yeah. right? And one of the things that makes being an artist difficult is you're always in that either or place. You know, what are my motivations? You have to really yeah. be very reflective on yourself. Um, but I frankly wish we lived in a society of people that were more reflective yeah. on mm -hmm. themselves, questioning their motives, wondering mm -hmm. what they were doing. And in this way, I think doing art actually has a very beneficial, practical impact on people that do it, who take it very seriously, mm -hmm. um, because it humbles them and it makes them think in that either or and really question your motives. Because mm -hmm. it is not self-evident if you change your work. Is that um, wise in a marketing dimension or is it sacrificing the integrity? Right. You yourself have to see what you're doing. Right. And that's one of the unique things that tr that doing art or doing creativity can do is really really make you in touch with your own motives that frankly it seems like we have a society of people that don't do that anymore and yeah. i mean an example and remember we're talking about artists who understand that they're creating not just for themselves yeah that's the other thing because that's the thing that's what we're talking about because those who create for themselves they don't care they don't buy by those rules well in a similar way you Cause know because sh it shouldn't be out in the world yeah but like i said earlier if they put it out in the world, then that statement no longer stands true, in my opinion, that they created for themselves. Well, and it's a, and it's a you know a broad connection, but in the same way, like um, I guess my mind when I'm talking about the good that this mm -hmm. humility would have for the society as a whole. Mm -hmm. When you go to vote, you're not just voting for someone who's going to make laws for your life. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you're affecting other people. Your vote is by definition in the world. But we have people now who just vote thinking what. I believe in and what I want to see yeah, yeah. and they're they're acting like these artists who are only affecting themselves yeah, yeah. but the moment you go to vote you're affecting other people so think about how your vote affects other people think about how you act affect other people yeah. you know don't just be the the insular we have so yeah. much of this insular thinking and in, in different things and that's just that's something we need to break down mm -hmm. and I think trying to thinking of your work is for others thinking about your vote as for others thinking about your your business your daily life as being for others has a massive transformative impact on what you're trying to do that one makes it better that's the mm -hmm. thing you're actually a more thoughtful voter or a more thoughtful business person or a more thoughtful artist yeah. when you do that and if everyone were to do that um i, th I think it would go a long way in a yeah. very beneficial way you know one thing that artists need to keep in mind um sometimes particularly those of us who put our artwork in the world to impact others to mm -hmm. help others to mm -hmm. um you know make people cry mm -hmm. Oh, you yeah. know, shed a tear, yeah. feel happy, laugh. Yeah. We often have to give the people what they want by giving them what they need. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So if we put our work out there and we have to make adjustments mm. to make it for the film festivals, to mm. make it make a short, like really truly a short short mm. so that it can get out there. You can tell us, I've seen many shorts. I've seen amazing stories told in three minutes. Oh, yeah. yeah you yeah. can tell a story in as many minutes as you want. It just may not be like all the stuff you want. It may not be like the long shots that you want because you want these long shots to last for a certain amount of time. You don't want any dialogue for like 60 seconds. So you want people to just see the action that's slowly happening and building in, you know, in the, um, in the composition. So you kind of like, you know, so you may not be able to do a lot of that to tell the story mm -hmm. in three minutes. But you can tell the story in three minutes or two minutes or whatever the count. Right. But so if you really know that you have a great story, it can help someone and you feel as though they need it, well, give them what they want by giving them what they need. Mm -hmm. if, if, the, if the film festival say, hey, you know, we need an eight minute piece, all right, give them what they want. Yeah. Just make sure that that story is in there so when they see it, they still give them what they need. That's beautiful. I really like that. You know, you know and I think that's a good test for making sure that you're not sacrificing the integrity yes. of the work. Exactly. That you, that's your Just you gotta do it you gotta do it a different way. You know? Um, you said um you, you said you have ten no, you said fifteen hundred words. Yeah, like I was just like an eight hundred. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You yeah, had yeah, to yeah, cut yeah. five hundred out of yeah. fifteen hundred, yeah. you said or ten thousand. Uh, five thousand, like five thousand five hundred. But I have ten thousand oh, okay. words, so you have five. to shrink to eight thousand and five thousand because okay. different magazines yeah. have different restrictions. Yeah. So, you know, but if you know those if you do the the homework in the beginning and you know those restrictions, yes. then when you write it, you already write yeah, it you're, those descriptions. You know what I'm saying? So that way when you gut it, it's not when you have to gut those words, yeah. it's not just God forsaken, <laughs> ugly, <laughs> gutty, because now you're just taking stuff out. It's in the structure. It's good to go, exactly, to, to already go into it knowing that. So people got to like really take it as a business and 
do the research and know the the platforms that you're trying to submit to. Oh yeah. And what they want, what the requirements are. So I know the requirements of festivals. I just chose right to do Amanda the way I did it for my own reasons. First screenings sold oh, yeah, out. Oh yeah, they sold out. You know, and so I'm gonna get the numbers. I'm gonna get the eyeballs in front of it. Oh yeah. I mean, it's another. It's a simple. You know, something I was gonna say is one of the big edits I had to make on a lot of stories is you know a guy really great writer named Robert um, Butler Olson Butler and he um, he had this part where he says you know you always want to be thinking about not writing to the grammar but writing to the camera and what he meant by that is if you have two sentences you say okay you say the road was blue and Sarah was walking to the mail- mailbox okay well that's grammatically correct mm-hmm. but actually it's kind of problematic here's the second version of that sentence you say Sarah was walking to was walking on the blue road to the mailbox the second center is better because you start with the action, then you see the road is blue and you're walking to the mailbox. The first one told you the road, it gave you all the information, but you don't have a smooth camera in the head per se, right? right? You right. see what I'm saying? Yeah. Same thing, you know, in a grammar class, you get it correct. Yeah. Um, but actually, the first sentence is jagged. It doesn't quite work because you see the road, then you go back to Sarah, and then you see the mailbox all ahead, as opposed to saying Sarah is walking on the blue road to the mailbox. You see, it's like all mm-hmm. forward pushing, the camera yeah. is moving. Um, well, let me tell you. That's good. You know, you read that, uh, you, you, you learn that, you go, oh my gosh, I have to go through all my stories and fix that. Yeah. Um, but one, knowing that you, you now know why you're getting rejected, mm-hmm. you know, made that change, the magazine, like, bam, 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 you know, it makes a huge yeah. difference. Yeah. And also your works, you're not so married to the structure of the, the grammar of the sentences that you refuse to change it. Yeah, right. And then three, since you're... Since you're like, I want to get my stuff out there, there's the motivation to do the work, to yeah. change those things. To do what you have to do. Do what you have to And then four, the, the stories are better. They're literally better. They're better with this yeah. change. Yeah. So you benefited from the feedback. Yeah, so, if you're, so if the exactly. whole reason you're doing it is to make the best work possible, mm-hmm. well, then feedback even has a role there because yeah. you think you're making the best work possible, but yeah. you've just never heard what Butler is saying. My, my AD and I, right, um, we was in Richmond. Um, one of the nights I had to make some, cha- well, one of the early mornings, I had to make some changes to the script, right? Mm-hmm. Um, just to kind of, I, I need to cut down this long, long restaurant scene with mm-hmm. Amanda and Pharrell. Mm-hmm. So, but she wanted to come down to help me, like, we do some rewrites. I'm like, yo, no. Like, you're not going to, no. I, right. This is mine. This is mine. <laughs> right. I'm creating this. I know what I have to do. You can come down later. So that you can look at it and kind of like see like, oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 And I made some amazing changes mm. that really didn't gut the script. Right. But it did. I took a lot of stuff out, but I took stuff out because one of my weaknesses, one of my other weaknesses, I'm a lot better now because I'm, I learned, sure. is to show more, say less. Mm. That is a golden rule with screenwriting. Screen writing, right. Show more, say less. Right. You don't have to... Say that this is the blue cup that, right. that I have right here. Right. They'll see it. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Right, 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 right. Yeah. You can say, I love this blue cup. No, you don't got to say that. <laughs> yeah, this is a good cup. No, this is, this is my favorite. Yeah, this is my favorite. That's what you would say, right? Yeah. You wouldn't even say it was a cup. Yeah, when we say it. Because, yeah. duh. <laughs> yeah, right. Like the, the, audience is smart, the audience is smarter than that. Yeah. So, show more, say less. You know, so you let action right. speak. Right. I've learned that. Mm. I didn't know that beforehand. Mm. Right? I've heard about it. I didn't know it. Now I know it. My scripts will be better. Right. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. So, the same thing with what's the name? Um, I'm Stain. Oh, Stain. Yeah, Stain yeah. opens up in the gym with two women. Mm. You know, riding the bikes. Right. Right, riding the bikes, sweating, like competing. Right, right, right. One is like struggling. The other one is like Good to go. Not right. yeah, and so you already know that you already know what one is in shape, no, one is not, not so right. much, or right. at least not in shape as, as she is. Right. Why would I have to say, "Oh my God, this is so hard"? Right. Right. No, right. I'm gonna show. I'm gonna right. show the suffering in her face. That's right. That's right. That's showing more, say, saying less. Absolutely. You know what I mean? Absolutely. So, um, but I know that because of what put myself out there mm-hmm. and someone reading it. Mm-hmm. And someone saying, "Hey, you got to start showing more saying that." Oh yeah, oh yeah. Well, and that just goes one of the. I mean, the warnings. I think that a lot of artists need to take. Like, you really need to realize that you probably think you are better than you actually are, if no one's ever seen it. 
Like, you know, that's a hard reality to face. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe you are Van Gogh and only your brother's seen your work and you're some <laughs> deity. Maybe you are. I'm not sure. <laughs> Chances are. Um, no. And, and arguably, one of the reasons Van Gogh got good is precisely nobody wants it. And so there's a certain yeah, rejection right. there that makes him maybe even him. Um, and you go to Joyce, you go to, you know, Forrest, all the Virginia Woolf. They're in these Bloomberg groups. Yeah. They're in these communities of yeah. people that have seen their work. Yeah. Um, the isolated artist is a the genius of the isolated artist is a dangerous True. narrative True. to believe in. True. Uh, it's dangerous. True. And and you really want to make sure you're not doing that. And then, worse yet, to go back to what we were saying earlier, since often when artists say that they don't mind being the isolated, lonely artist and they won't appreciate it, they actually do mind, <laughs> then one day they've been ascribing mm. to this myth that's not even true, and then they wake up with this weight where they want to get their work out there, and then they can they don't even have the marketing ability, so they don't know how, but maybe they try, and then it turns out the work's not as good as they thought, and they just get slap, 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 and yeah. they and they give up or they yeah. quit. And so just taking these realities to heart now. Mm-hmm. You know, it's um is so important because you know, if you're um you know, if you're in a you know, I wrestled for a bunch of years and um, someone comes up to you and just says, Hey, um, watch out for the Peterson if you're, you know, in the back holding them when they stand up. Okay. It's different from when like Someone's doing the Peterson too. It's like, hey, watch out for the Peterson. You're like, well, the move's being done. You've lost yeah. the match, right? You know, yeah. it's no good. Don't, as an artist, like, accept these realities now before you're told them when the harshness of these realities are hitting you. Right. You know, accept it now. Like, what well, we're telling you, I mean, you know, if you're hearing this, you're like, well, that doesn't apply to me. Oh, well, I used to think it didn't apply to me, and my stuff was not as good. At, because I was the isolate, you know, I didn't care what other people thought, and I wasn't reading the writing manuals and different things. But then I, Started to, and I, and it was hard, and it's no fun to realize you need to go back and fix things and to change these different things. But it's worth it. Yeah. It's worth it. You yeah. know, when you get like with a man that you're right. sold out, it's worth it. So as yeah. difficult as it might be to take these different realities to heart, it's worth it. it it's also worth um, putting yourself in a vulnerable position. It's worth sometimes it. too. You know what I'm saying? Because you know, I'm putting myself in a vulnerable position. People are supporting Amanda. Um, most of the people are supporting Amanda because of me. Right. You know, they're supporters of mine, they're friends, they're, they're close associates. Right. Um, and they want to see me, you know, they want to see it. They want to see me win. They want to see, you know, some good things happening and they're proud. Right. But they could also, I am also still, that also right there in itself is a lot of pressure. Oh, yeah. To right? So that when they, they'll see it and they'll be like, damn, I thought it was going to be better than this. <laughs> all this right, marketing, right. all this, all this yeah, thing yeah, you yeah, talk yeah. about. But the thing about it is that you got to realize that, yo, People are always gonna have an opinion. Right. You can't let people's opinion get you down, no matter right. if it's bad or what. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. You know, you, you gotta be proud of what you created, and then move on to the next thing and create something better, or or what may appear to be better, or whatever that is. Oh yeah, and I mean we're also our own worst enemy in the sense if you get a hundred people that say, oh, it's great, you get two people that say they don't like it. And it's the two people that are the only ones you care about. And like, they don't even have a reason. They just say they don't like it. And it's an uninformed negative review. So you've got to, you've got to note that, but then at the same time, be aware of the actual constructive feedback, you know, and to care about that, but not to care about the jerk who just gave you a thumbs down on your YouTube video because they're mean or something like that. (laughs) But no, it's worth being vulnerable and look, the the thing is, if you um, you know, if you want a life where there's no or an artistic life and life in general, I guess, where there's no weight at all, like there's no hard weight, there's no difficulty at all. Well, you know, wings have weight too. You know, you got to bear those on your back. But if you don't have wings, you can't fly. Yeah. And so, you know, you got to yeah. take up that vulnerability. You got to take true. that weight, and it's worth it. It's worth it. Yeah. Um, there is something, and I mean, I think you can speak. There is something wonderful. Of when you've worked on for many years, you've made movies, and you literally do see improvement. Mm-hmm. Like you yeah, see yeah, it. No, you don't see it. You should. If you're open to understanding, but even I, I, you know what? Even if you're not open to feedback, if you're doing something enough, you do get better. Yeah. Yeah, you're gonna get better. Yeah. If you're doing something enough, I believe. I believe. Yes. You know, I think it helps when you're doing research and learning and. Yeah. The danger with not getting feedback is making a mistake you don't know you're making. Yeah, right. And then so you just keep doing it yeah, and you get doing, really good at that mistake. No one's no one checking you. <laughs> oh, and I, you know, in the writing world, so, I, it, yes. a, a, a very big example of this is writing to elegance as opposed to writing to the camera in a story. 
Like the most elegant sentence may not be the sentence that has the, the smoothest moving camera, right? Mm -hmm. The most beautiful sentence, like I was t saying the example of, you know, I can go on and say, you know, the, uh, the, the, the puddles on the road were collecting drips and the sunrise was rising up into it as Sarah walked down the hill uh, from the house. There's a kind of elegance to there off the, you know, off the cup. There's a kind of thinking there. But I went from the road up to Sarah at the house and it's kind of a little yeah. jagged, right? Yeah, right. I, I need it, you know, it, it doesn't look, quite look work. Like I want to say like Sarah, Sarah came out of the house yeah. and noticed yeah. that it was raining and saw that there were puddles on the road that she, that she stopped and glanced at. Mm -hmm. You know, boom, I'm staying on Sarah. I'm yeah. not introducing a character. Because the way the first sentence was structured implied that the main subject of the action was the road. When it is not, right. because the next section is going to be Sarah. So you so, want to stay on yeah. the subject. You want to make. You don't want to be confusing your reader on what they need to be focused on. Right. Mm -hmm. But if you're writing to elegance, or you're writing to the poetry, or maybe you're writing to the imagery, you can get really, really good at doing yeah. that. Cool. But you'll be very bad at story. But you won't even know you're bad at story because you're not thinking about what Butler's telling you. Mm -hmm. And so that would be the danger of not getting feedback. Mm -hmm. However. You know, if you're writing to elegance, maybe you just become a really good nonfiction writer. Maybe you become a good essayist where you're not worrying about the story. So I do think doing it continually is quite good. Um, there is the danger, though, of optimizing to the wrong thing. Yeah. You know, sure. the wrong standard yeah. that mm -hmm. can happen in writing. And then another thing, too, when it comes down to art, um, people develop bad habits. Yeah, exactly. You know, and bad habits is something that you need to get. It's hard to break it later. Very hard. When it's, when, when it's part of your DNA. You Can know, you just do it without thinking about just it? Just do it. So right. it's kind of hard to... So it's... Yeah, I, the process of bringing people in is important, in my opinion. Oh, yeah. I've learned I've learned a lot just from people, like, reading my scripts and yeah. the table reading we did. And, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, and even later, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, so... But but then you still make the... You're the one who makes the decision. Okay. Right. But I'm still going to do this. Yes. Because I'm convicted to it. All right, cool. Oh, yeah. But, you know, but there's going to be something. Hopefully, there's some things that you'll be like, no, I, 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 think, I think this is going to be, in a, I think this is going to be um, an asset oh, to sure. my script. Well, and that makes me think of the difference between, you know, Bonhoeffer had this idea between cheap and uh, costly grace. And it almost makes, there's a difference between the cheap sticking to your vision. No one's seen it. You're alone. So you stick right. to your vision. Right. And then the costly stick, the difficulty stick to your vision where other people say they don't like it or they have different yeah. things okay. and you still stick to it. Yeah. You know, you yeah. want to always, if you stick to your vision, you mm -hmm. want it to be hard mm -hmm. because that actually increases the likelihood it's right. Mm -hmm. You know, if it was hard to stick to your vision but you're like, I really need to, well then it probably is good for you to stick to your right. vision right. because, you know, right. it probably is too. There's a yeah. test. Yeah. Yeah. There's a test. Yeah. All of this, I think, points to the the danger of not having a test mm -hmm. you know it's hard to determine when you should stick to your 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 vision or not what yeah. you should change or not if you don't have exactly. a test exactly. because we're all like amanda we're all this mystery of are we being selfish or are we being selfless we're all mm -hmm. like lloyd are we being you know are we overcoming or are we hiding mm -hmm. and we also to ourselves often don't know our own motives you know and we think we know our own motives but if you never get tested, you never actually find out if you know your own motives yeah. or not. And so right. even in that situation, yeah. you need the test. And I, and I really appreciate, Mr. Cooper, um, how much you've um, made me um, you know, appreciate the role of the marketing, the role of bringing other people and trying to get your stuff out there. Yeah. Both because as an artist, it, you feel like you're finishing stuff, you complete stuff, so that inspires you to keep going yeah. from that kind of mental health aspect, the excitement of it, yeah. and also from the literally... The artists who hear this need to understand that everything that you're describing, the market beginning people, actually makes you a better artist. Mm -hmm. That it is not business over here and art over there, yeah. but that actually bringing them together, yeah. you know, helps the art yeah. come out. The business of art. The business of you art. I mean? Absolutely. So I so I appreciate all that from you, Miss Good. Thank you so much for your Thank time. You. It's welcome. been a delight. Um, tell people where can they go to learn more about Amanda? Oh, when, you know, things well, Amanda. Like, yes, yeah. Amanda. Um, I will always have the um, website updated. So Amanda. Right. TheFilm.com. Excellent. AmandaTheFilm.com. Wonderful. Um, it's always a good place. And also, um, IMDb. You know, if you, put, mm. if you go into IMDb, just put um, put Amanda2022 mm. in the search menu of, of, of IMDb, then IMDb will pull up because we have the page and, you know, Outstanding. that's set up there, so... Outstanding, yeah. and you know your business, light your your marketing business, mm -hmm. some of the different things like yeah, that. Yeah, definitely. That's LifeViewMarketingAndVisuals.com. Ah. 
But if you go to Amanda the film, it's on the same website. Oh, great. It's great. just a page. Always like Amanda. like view. I think that's so great. Yeah. That's Thank so you. good. Yeah. I yeah. love that. Yeah, just wow. had, I just had this um, a little intro created that I'm going to be using in front of all of my, like, my work. Um, you know, intro and outro kind of thing. So it's just something that kind of brings attention to you when you're looking at the screen. It's yeah, like, yeah, yeah. Okay, life view. You know, I got this little boom. motion graphic type of thing and boom. And, you know, stuff like that. Just kind of, so it could kind of stick in your brain. Get it. Well, there you go. It's all getting yeah. getting it in the brain. Well, yeah. Excellent. There you go. Bam. Get it. Well, Mr. <laughs> well, Mr. Cooper, um, thank you so much for your time. Yeah. It's really been a delight speaking to you, and thank you for all of the advice for any of the artists out there uh, yeah. to help them, you know, take that weight of wings and fly with it. True. So. And a lot of people are on Instagram, so I'm on Instagram sure. too. It's, oh, great. And it's not my company name, but it's Ty Creative Visuals. So T Y Creative Visuals. Um, that's the handle. Excellent. Well, yeah. thank you, Mr. Cooper. Right. I appreciate it. Best with everything. Thank you, thank my you sir. Appreciate thank it. You. It's a pleasure. Thank you, thank you so much. It.